Hi, I'm Olivia. And I'm Amy. And this is a Girls in Marketing podcast. Every week, we release a new episode that you won't want to miss. Our guests are industry experts with amazing experiences, so you'll always come away with new nuggets of wisdom. From educational and inspiring episodes covering the latest in digital marketing, to casual and fun chats with the Girls in Marketing team, unpacking marketing myths and trends, we've got it all. Here at Girls in Marketing, we're all about empowering and supporting women to be the best marketers they can be through our online learning platform and community check out our resources and membership to get involved as we'd love to welcome you to our inner circle right let's dive into an episode together hello and welcome back to another snack episode of the girls in marketing podcast today we're talking about how to start a career in marketing this is something that so many of our community ask us on probably a daily basis i would say Mm -hmm. we have a lot of aspiring marketers career change people those who just want to get into the industry and they want to know how to boost their employability how to create opportunities and something i'm a massive advocate of is creating your own opportunities when I got into marketing it wasn't through that kind of traditional university route and I think I'm a big advocate for kind of creating opportunities especially in the industry because it's actually quite an accessible industry I think in terms of getting yourself some experience rather than having to rely on um you know employers or university or anything like that Mm -hmm. nothing to say that university isn't you know, a good thing for some people it is, but often I think it's about, okay, how do I actually create things that work for me and that'll help me in the future? Even if you are at university, doing these extra things will really help to kind of boost your employability. So I think the first thing is my understanding of creating opportunities is, I would say, genuinely to do your own thing. So to mm-hmm. start your own thing. Mm-hmm. Um, if anyone knows me, you'll know that I had a blog. So I started blogging 2015. I think it was 2015 or it might have even been earlier than that. Um, and I was like an avid writer as much as I wasn't a very good one. That's another thing. You don't have to be amazing to, to start these things. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people get scared to kind of start, you know, a blog or a social media or something like that yeah. because they're like, oh, I'm not very good it's at it. Or perfect. Yeah. I don't know how to do yeah. it. So I started blog and I was just writing about kind of like beauty and fashion and lifestyle stuff and um, feminism. I used to write about, you wouldn't Coco, then going on to start a business around feminism. <laughs> um, but I really enjoyed that, which then kind of led led me on to knowing and kind of understanding that you could make money from writing so like copywriting and blog writing which then I started to freelance whilst I was at university so that was kind of like my initial first few steps into the the marketing world and I think that I would definitely recommend anyone who's starting a, a new you know a new adventure in into marketing to maybe have a go of those things yeah. if you feel up for it yeah yeah I would definitely say don't see your lack of experience as like a massive massive barrier because like you said marketing is quite accessible compared to other industries and even when like I think back to when like we ever first ever had that chat like I had no experience I think actually I think I volunteered Mm -hmm. um, which is also a great thing like if you can volunteer for like small charities or like small businesses um, and then that could like go into it like Mm -hmm. a paid role but Mm -hmm. um, I think yeah that voluntary experience is so valuable and like I say when I came to you and there was kind of a very apparent lack of experience there I was studying marketing at university I was in my first year I had like what like a month's experience of like running like a small charity social media account with like 50 followers but I think you saw kind of the passion you saw how enthusiastic I was about the industry you saw how invested I was in the industry like scrolling through LinkedIn like too often than a student <laughs> normally does um, and yeah I think just don't keep reminding yourself that I have no experience have no experience because the more you do that, the more of a barrier it becomes. You can, like, say, create your own opportunities and, mm-hmm. yeah, kind of yeah. get into marketing yeah. that way. I think for me, with you in particular, was that, like, proactiveness. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something that a lot of people can take away is actually you were in, like, your first year of mm-hmm. uni. And I think, I don't even think you've been there for that long. Like, I'm <laughs> was, saying first year. I but did I, it in COVID as well. So I was literally just sat in my bedroom <laughs> the whole time. Like. <laughs> so I, when I seen that and I was like, your first year uni student, and you're like, you want to just get every experience mm-hmm. possible. And as much as I would say, do as much as you can, obviously do as much as you can without burning yeah. yourself out. But 
I really liked that about you in particular was, okay, you didn't necessarily have loads of experience, but also you did have that passion, but equally you were like yeah. really proactive. So I was like, if that's what you're like in your first year of uni and it, and now you're like in your last year, so sure. that's amazing. <laughs> but if you, that's what you're like then, yeah. then what are you going to be? And I kind of see yeah. in, this sounds so cringe, but like a bit of me in you. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah. I, I was always that like really want to go out and do things and get things done. And yeah. I think that proactive, being yeah. proactive is, is massive. Yeah. For, and for I think it's career. also, I think I did this in like, in like the interview with you and like interviews that I had throughout that first year, but see kind of make sure you kind of highlight the transferable skills within like part-time roles that you have. I know I worked at Tesco and I kind of, tailored that in the interview mm -hmm. to be like I learned communication you learn so much in the part-time jobs that are transferable to whatever industry you want to yeah. go in so I think people often overlook that so I think that's a great tip to kind of say I've had these part-time jobs I've done these like whatever job it might might be like babysitting waitressing like, it could be anything but take what you've learned from that and kind of apply it to how that would work in the marketing industry and I think that always shows employers yeah. like you can actually do I it. I think that's really important as well because I think the other thing is that I feel like the the majority of people that I speak to are actually people who are career changers. So it's mm -hmm. not even just necessarily someone who's starting from school or from uni. It's people who have got a wealth of experience in a particular industry or in a particular career that's just not marketing. Mm -hmm. And they've realized at some point in their lives, whether it's that they've just kind of got tired of what they're doing or they've just learned a bit more about marketing or they want to try something different. Maybe they've come back from a career break and thought, I'm going to just completely change things up. Um, and there, I think I get a lot of questions about sort of, I've got a lot of experience, but I just don't know how it applies. And maybe they're not in a position where, I mean, yeah, maybe they don't have the time that you would maybe have while you're at uni or, mm -hmm. you know, while you're in school or whatever it might be to, to, to put your hand to something else. Maybe they've got a family, maybe they've got, yeah, a full-time job that although they want to tr transition out of it, they've still got to do it for now because it pays the bills, they can't just yeah. drop it. Yeah. So I think sometimes that can be a bit of a, you know a barrier for some people and they sort of feel like well it's all well and good saying like do these extra things and create opportunities but how and again I think what you just mentioned about actually reflect on what you are doing and what you have done and because the barriers to en of entry or barriers to entry for marketing are not they're not like you know getting into law or going mm -hmm. to become a doctor you know you've not necessarily got to have specific qualifications you can you know, reflect on the skills that you've got, the things that you've done, whether it's specific to marketing, like in terms of a very technical sense or not. You know, if you've got great people management skills, if you've got great communication and written skills, if you've got all of these things, a lot of them can be applied to marketing. So I think something really good to do is take the time to reflect on your skills, maybe sit and map out, you know, what you're good at, uh, reflect on the different things that have kind of built those skills. Those are the sorts of things that you can use to evidence in interviews and in job applications. Yeah and yeah. stuff like that and you know really try and utilize those as best as you can and then if you do have a little bit of time on the side it might not be enough time to to start a blog or to to start freelancing but you might have time to do some kind of you know free or inexpensive mm -hmm. courses here and there to join a membership you know yeah. join a membership for example like girls in marketing like where, girls marketing. Yeah, <laughs> where, but like where you, you meet other people in yeah. the industry mm -hmm. you gain advice from them you network with people you find out about their career journeys yeah. because one thing that I always found so interesting about the girls in marketing community is that people tend to assume that everybody's gone down the same route. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, well, you know, I haven't gone to uni to do marketing, so I don't. I feel like I'm behind everyone. I didn't go to uni to do marketing. Mm -hmm. You didn't go to uni to do marketing. Yeah. Obviously, you are studying marketing, yeah. but in a kind of degree apprenticeship, different style of way. Yeah. Um, the majority of people that I know in the industry have not taken a one-size-fits-all route. So, you know, it's absolutely doable to change careers into marketing. It's just using your time as effectively as possible and yeah. Yeah. always having that goal in mind and everything that you do, making sure that you're kind of doing it towards... Yeah yeah towards that that goal of moving and even if it's in the, the current job that you're in you might not want to stay there but you might think actually we've got a marketing team and I might ask my boss if I can like shadow them or yeah. see yeah. if I can kind of get a bit of exposure to what they're working on maybe you know one day a week they might let me go and have some involvement I may be able to find a mentor within my company who works in the marketing team who'd be willing to help you know kind of you know upskill me develop me um yeah 
that kind of thing. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of options. And I think that sometimes it's just, it, it just feels like, where do you start? So, yeah. 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 That's, I was actually going to say something similar, mm. but to piggyback off the back of what you just said, Amy, I think possibly even if you're in a, maybe a smaller company. So if you're in a bigger company, asking maybe yeah to shadow the marketing mm. team or something. Mm. But if you're in a smaller company, even saying, do we have anyone who does our social media mm. or do we have anyone who yeah. updates our website or do we even have a website? Because yeah. I remember in the early days of starting Girls in Marketing, I was like mentoring quite a few people on a one-to-one basis. And there was one person in particular that was a receptionist um, full-time at a hotel. It was like a hotel and restaurant type thing Mm -hmm. um, up in Scotland and she was like similar to to what you just said Amy I can't quit my job I need it to pay the bills but also really want to get into marketing but also I just don't have time to like start a blog or do anything Mm -hmm. like that Mm -hmm. And I said, it was just a, a small hotel and, and restaurant. It wasn't a chain or anything like that. And I said, who like runs your social media or who like sorts your blogs or whatever? And she was like, I don't, I don't think anyone does. I don't I don't think they pay anyone to do that because I don't think they'd be able to like afford to pay yeah. a freelancer or anything like that. And I said, honestly, go to your boss or go to someone and say to them, like, I know we don't really have anyone. First of all, ask if they do. And if they do, then that might not be an option yeah. but if they don't say oh because I take that on mm. um and she did do that and then the next time she came back to me which is like a month or so later she was like they want me to do it um and then her title then changed t- from I think it was uh, like front of house or something to like marketing and something else so she was still doing like admin I think it was so she was still doing some of the admin stuff but she was also doing marketing and mm-hmm. then she transitioned again over to like more events so then she was doing marketing and events for she was organizing events and stuff like that and then now she's like moved jobs a few times since then and yeah. she's like properly in marketing and she's doing all that and I mean literally talking about it, it's giving me goosebumps because <laughs> I just think like you know she took that opportunity yeah. she they said to her that oh, you can do that within the same time as your full-time job. You can do it as like three quarters is, uh, you know, your receptionist role and then a quarter could be the marketing. Mm. Even if it's just that tiny step asking, does someone do our social media or does someone look after our website? Does someone do our blogs? And then see if you can do it. It's not always an option, obviously, but it's always worth putting yourself out there and asking. And it does always take the confidence to kind of put yourself out there and ask and you just got to think what's the worst that can happen the worst that can happen is to say no and you just get yeah. back to like whatever you do yeah. day to day like it's fine yeah yeah but definitely I think the main takeaway would be mm-hmm. you know in whatever capacity it is try and create your own opportunities mm-hmm. if you can because at the end of the day as 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 maybe negative as it sounds you are your biggest supporter. You're going to look out for you more than anybody else. Whether your manager is great and, you know, really wants to support you or not, you know, if you're not maybe expressing those things that you want to do, they can't read your mind. You need to go out there and and ask for these things or do these things or take initiative. They might not all work, but, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever kind of your capacity is doing what you can within that, then, yeah, I think that, you know, marketing, like we say, it's not... I think maybe some people perceive it to be super easy to get into because there's that sometimes perception of anyone yeah. could do marketing, which that's a whole other episode. <laughs> yeah. but, but I definitely think that, you know, the barriers to entry aren't as high maybe as people think, mm-hmm. particularly in certain yeah. areas yeah. of marketing that maybe aren't necessarily as um, technical or, or whatever. And yeah. I think that, you know, if you actually look at, at what you already know or can do or the skills you have, you probably already have quite a lot of it that you can build yeah. off of. Yeah. And I think if you are um, someone who maybe wants to get into it, like apprenticeships mm-hmm. uh, are a good mm-hmm. one. Yeah. And a yeah. Kira, like obviously you're doing Definitely. degree apprentice um but not even necessarily do de- a degree like obviously just that's amazing but any t- yeah. any type of mm-hmm. apprenticeship yeah um I definitely looked at degree apprentice- apprenticeships when I kind of like was leaving sixth form and that was kind of it's kind of the perfect balance that I saw was learning whilst also obviously getting a degree at the same time and yeah I'm always the biggest advocate for apprenticeships and I'm really glad to see that there's kind of like more and more employers that are actually seeing the value in apprenticeships now and kind of there are more kind of opportunities out there for um degree apprenticeships or just general apprenticeships in general Mm. um and yeah so it's definitely worth like taking a look at like websites like the prospects website even the government website um if you are in the UK um that's a really good website for like opportunities Mm -hmm. um 
if you are looking for an apprenticeship yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and pitching it to your employer as well because uh -huh. I think apprenticeships are known as being like oh you're young and you need to get into the industry but there are like you know level three level four level five and yeah. lots of levels of apprenticeships that you can do whilst you're working and yeah. with um the way it is at the moment I don't know how it will change but the government fund 95 percent yeah. of the training so as an employer they only have to pay five percent and it's a huge misconception isn't it like I think yeah. employers obviously always think oh I'm paying for your education I'm paying for your training and it's kind of like five percent it doesn't amount yeah. to a mm. lot um, no, and also if your employer is not willing to pay for your training anyway, red flag, red flag, red so, red flag. flag. yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. But I think training can be expensive, yeah. which is yeah. obviously a, a big again plug for girls and marketing membership yeah. for anyone who wants to, to train. Um, but training that is accessible, so you know the ones that are maybe partially funded mm -hmm. or are on the cheaper side, are yeah. always good because you know it's not especially smaller businesses or even medium sized businesses. They don't necessarily have hundreds of thousands to put towards um, learning and development, and that obviously a, should be a key priority for them. Mm -hmm. But often it, it's not, so it's about understanding what have I actually got to work with. So if people are in positions now where they're in a company, maybe they're doing you know a like a sales role or even like a bit of an admin or like something that could maybe be more marketing maybe seeing if there's like a level three or something that would fit you that's marketing related that you could do on the sides of your full-time role and then pitching it and asking mm -hmm. your employer to pay is may maybe a good way to go mm -hmm. yeah. yeah fabulous well thank you so much for watching today's episode hopefully if you are looking to get into marketing then we have shared some helpful tips um, and we'll see you again soon Thanks so much for joining us for another episode of the Girls in Marketing podcast. We love hearing from you. So if you enjoyed this episode, leave us a review to let us know your thoughts and make sure you hit the subscribe or follow button to be the first to hear when our new episodes released. Don't forget, if you want to get involved with Girls in Marketing, check out our membership to join our incredible community of marketers. Think marketing resources, courses, webinars, and more. Find out more on our website or drop us a message on any of our social channels at Girls in Marketing.